How do you handle as a brother that's truly been a blessing in disguise? With everything he does, he sets the bar up so incredibly low that with very minimal effort on my part, I look like the star child of the family. But honestly, I think he is just a genius. With, you know, since, um, since he's been little, his philosophy has been if you do something so bad the first time, nobody ever asks you to do it again. I remember, I remember, I was probably about like 12 or 13 years old, he was like 15, 16, that was like the time we started like mowing the lawn for the first time. And my dad asked, oh, Mako, you know, you should go out and mow the lawn. And he's like, all right, fine, I'll try it. And he goes, honestly, I think Stevie Wonder could have made straighter lines than Michael. <laughs> Needless to say, he was never asked to mow the lawn again. <laughs> And, and, you know, even now, my mom was like, oh, you know, we need to get something from the grocery store, pick up some milk or whatever. They don't trust him going to Wegmans, like, which is a store five minutes away, to pick up milk. They think he's going to somehow screw that up. How do you, how do you mess up going to the store to pick up milk? Because he's got it, he's honestly got it down to a science that he's never asked to do anything. Even for this party, he's literally not done one thing to help out for his own graduation. <laughs> But yet, somehow the state of New Jersey feels that he's capable of being called Dr. Papano and, and dispensing drugs to random people. I don't know. If anyone's talked to my mom in the past three months, you're well aware that my brother works at Novartis. He got a job. She loves telling everyone. But what she doesn't tell you is that he only works three days a week. And you know, so I was, I was actually going through his computer the other day, and I found that I found his Google Calendar, what he does at work. I just thought I would bring it up for you guys what it looks like. So, you know, the only thing is, he has to travel an hour and a half to get to work, which is fine. So he leaves, he works up early three days a week. He gets in at 8 a.m. It says, you know, make a cup of coffee, check my email, check Facebook, and take it easy after a long drive. You can't, you know, you can't jump into anything way too fast. Nine o'clock rolls around. He's uh, checking with the boss. And he tells her that he needs more time to do a project that he's already completed two days ago. <laughs> that way, you know, she's just like, oh, you know, that's great. You know, take all the time you need. And he's already done. And then... 10, 10 a.m. rounds. I don't know, I'm sure you guys are well aware. He loves like socializing, just walking around talking. So he gets to gets to see what all these other other employees are doing for the day. Eleven o'clock, and he's just like looking at me, like, no, it's his first lunch. <laughs> so he'll, uh, he'll eat the lunch that my mom packed him, check up on Yahoo News. I come home every day and he's like, oh, did you did you find out what happened? Like, you know, it's anything that's going on. He reads all 30 tabs of Yahoo News every day at work. Now I know that it's 11 o'clock, it's the first lunch. And then 12, you know, when normal people take their lunch, he pretends to make, like, pretends to be doing work to make everyone think that he's actually working. Like, he's like, oh, you know, I'm the kid, I'm too busy, I can't go to lunch with you guys. But little did they know that I already ate at 11. <laughs> And then one of them is his second lunch. That's when he goes down to the cafeteria and everyone thinks, oh, this kid's been working so hard at 12, and so he'll go down, spend an hour, one to two. <laughs> and then, and then two o'clock, he'll actually get a little work done, but really try not to stress him out, stress, stress, stress himself out too much. <laughs> and at three, he'll check in with the boss again and tell him, oh, you know, I'm gonna need some more time. But he tries to like, make sure that like, you know, the topic doesn't stay too much on the work and just try to you know, schmoozes his boss with whatever he knows how to do his charm and he says he has a great charm. I don't know. And then it's kind of cut off, but at four o'clock he leaves to beat the rush hour. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's three days a week. This is what he does. I'm pretty sure it'll work all three days. And yet the people at Novartis think that he's something good. I don't know. That's what, that's what he tells us they think of him. So. <laughs> um, as we were, you know, getting ready for this graduation party, we were going through all our home videos and pictures and things like that. And it's crazy to see how a tiny little, skinny little four-year-old boy like that had turned into <laughs> this guy. And, you know, I was, I was sitting there, I was thinking, like, yo, what really is, is the answer? How did that happen? And only one thing could come on. In all honesty, you know, we've had so many great times for the past 21 years. 
I'm sure we'll have a lot more in the future, especially because I expect you to be living at home until you're 30. <laughs> I know I speak on behalf of my entire family, my grandparents, my mom, my dad, that we honestly thought this day would never come. <laughs> you know, there have been so many times in your college career that I honestly, like, you know, I'm not even joking here that I didn't think you were going to graduate. <laughs> but you proved us all wrong, and you graduated from primary school with honors. And I, I know I can always count on you. You always have my back. Congratulations and good luck in the future. I think, uh, I think a couple of Nagel's friends want to come up and say a few words.